Before tearing into expression trees a little bit further, I want to drive home the motivation for why these expression trees are interesting and useful. We've seen that when you assign a lambda expression to an expression type with a, a generic uh, delegate type, then the compiler will just generate some code to create objects at runtime that sit on the heap and do absolutely nothing. All right, but the critical thing is that those objects store data, and we'll get in and see all that. First of all, I want to go back to our basics here. I have this ints array. I did something similar in the lambda expressions video, and I want to get all the ints where uh, they're less than two. So I'm going to say uh, i enumerable i enumerable int result gets ints dot where i i less than let's just say five instead. We'll go with five. Now this works exactly how I showed in the Lambda Expressions video. The compiler turns around and says, oh, okay, I'm going to convert this to a regular method. We'll invoke where and uh, enumerable and, and run it and give all the ints where they're less than five. Let me actually prove it. For each int i in result cw i, and hopefully what we see in the window here is all the ints, are all the ints that are less than five. Very good. Now, remember with extension methods that the, the array type does not have a where on it. Okay, so then the compiler looks for an extension method that appropriately matches, and if I hit F12 on this, we'll actually jump to it, and we see this where extension method embedded with several extension methods. we got union, zip, to look up, to dictionary, scroll up, scroll up, sum, add up all the values, single, select many. We've seen all these, min, max, that kind of thing. Let me go to the top. If you remember, what's the name of this class that is a static class and its only purpose in life is to supply extension methods, extension method, extension method, extension method. Its name is enumerable. Okay, hopefully that's a nice refresher. Let me come back here and rewrite this code exactly how the compiler would do it. I'm going to control X the source and say enumerable, call the static method, paste the source as the first argument into, into the method, and there we go. So that's that's exactly what the compiler does. And, and let me run this, and you see, oh, we get the same result. Very cool. Well, there's another class, a lot like enumerable, that has a bunch of extension methods. In fact, their names are identical to the enumerable class. Okay, all these link methods that we could use. The the uh, class I'm talking about is uh, queryable. Let me just queryable, and I can say dot where, just like we did with enumerable. I can say dot sum. We saw that in the enumerable. I can say dot any of these. Let's do order by and all the other stuff. So what is the purpose of this queryable thing? Right, in fact, I actually have it up already. Let me just new vertical tab group, and we can do a side by side comparison. And look at this. Let's go to the bottom. I'm going to go to the bottom of both classes. But you can see, if I can kind of line it up here, we have a zip, zip, where, 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 union, union, two lookup. Don't look like we have a two lookup over here. But for the most part, they're very much the same. So why do we have this queryable thing? All right, let me, let me show you. I'm going to scroll to the right here. Notice the enumerable extension methods. They take enumerable as the source. Okay, but the queryable extension methods, they take this iQueryable thing. Hmm, hmm. If we go look at iQueryable, I'm going to hit F12 on that. and Look at that. It's an interface with nothing in it. Okay? But it implements iNumerable and all these other non-generic interfaces. That's kind of uh, besides the point. I, I just want the, the fact that something implements iQueryable is enough info for the compiler. Let's look a little bit further at this this queryable thing. So the first argument type is an i queryable, which is analogous to an i enumerable. And then if I go further right here, oh, look what I see. Look what I see. Do you see it? Let's just look at, we'll look at these bottom two. The bottom two here in enumerable, they take func, which is delegates, which are delegates, or func is a delegate. Func is a delegate. Thus, when I use the enumerable methods, when my link statements resolve to the enumerable extension methods, then my lambda expressions get passed to delegates, meaning the compiler will simply trans my, translate my delegates to code, I mean my lambda expressions 
to normal code, okay, as we saw in the lambda expressions video. But queryable, on the other hand, instead of saying func, it says expression of func. And we saw in, I believe it was like the second video in this playlist, that expression of func, the compiler will convert our lambda expressions into code that will generate objects at runtime, into objects, into those dumb data objects that store the information about the lambda expression. No code is generated. So, Jamie, why are you taking so long on this? What's, what's the point here? Let me go back here. When I say enumerable.where and pass ints in this lambda, I think we're, we're done with this, then the lambda expression is converted to code. But if I say, hey, um, I enumerable int result two gets queryable dot where ints i i less than five. Now our lambda expression will be converted to objects. All right. Now I'm getting a red squiggly. And I'm going to address a little bit. Well, the reason I'm getting a red squiggly is because array doesn't implement i queryable. But if it did, if it did, our lambda expression would be converted to objects at runtime. And in this case, with the func, the delegate version, it's converted to code. So why is that cool? Why is that powerful? Why, wh wh what's the point? You know, I, don't we want code? Don't we run, want to run code? Don't we want to actually get stuff done, Jamie? Yeah, we do want to get stuff done. But using objects in the queryable version, we can reason or look at the lambda expression at runtime, instead of losing all the information into a compiled method, we can actually say, oh, they want i where i less than 5. We can reason about it and, and do something cool. I'll show you in the next video.